Hello, I'm Chris McLeod. I'm one of the electrophysiologists at Mayo Clinic. I specialize in treating arrhythmias in adults with congenital heart disease. And as a group of uh, several subspecialists that specialize in adult congenital heart disease, congenital heart disease, and also arrhythmias, we felt it was important to get a few messages out to the patients because the care and the treatment and even the presentation of arrhythmias in this group of patients is different. There are some salient differences which the patient should be aware of and obviously also their provider. So as a broad topic, arrhythmias in adults with congenital heart disease, uh, starting off, these can really present very differently. And um, for the most common arrhythmia out there, which is atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, these atrial arrhythmias as a whole, for many patients who don't have congenital heart disease, these arrhythmias can go unrecognized. For adults with congenital heart disease, because the heart has been operated on uh, many times, um, these arrhythmias can be really quite traumatic and can result in um, quite a significant decompensation. And it can be fairly acute or it can be insidious. And so just the presentation um, of that is, is sometimes not even easy for the clinician to recognize. The electrocardiogram, our main um, tool for detecting these arrhythmias can um, be difficult to interpret and these can be missed. So that's the first important thing. So if you as a patient with congenital heart disease is presenting with some insidious um, symptom of shortness of breath or fatigue and just not doing well, it may be an undiagnosed atrial arrhythmia. The other uh, important uh, difference at just this basic level to, to recognize is that Arrhythmias are the most common cause for hospitalization and also very often, depending on the syndrome, the most common cause for death. Uh, these arrhythmias by and large have the same mechanism because there are scars in the heart related to these surgeries for repairing congenital heart disease. Um, these scars lead to the development of these what we call reentrant arrhythmias, both in the ventricle and in the atrium, and both of those can result in hospitalization and the more serious complications that, that are suggested. And so it's common that it happens uh, because of these scars, by and large, uh, up to two-thirds or even higher of this population as a whole is going to have some arrhythmia at some stage and bringing uh, to your attention just the fact that these can be serious uh, events. They're also very amenable to catheter ablation. So instead of um, the patient with ischemic heart disease, someone who's had a heart attack, has developed a, a bad heart from a heart attack, they still, have con they still have coronary disease and they can go on to have worsening heart issues over time. It's different from the patient with repaired congenital heart disease. Some of these scars are fixed, and with a catheter, we can ablate around those, get rid of the atrial flutter, get rid of the uh, ventricular arrhythmia in many cases, and avoid long-term medications, and avoid defibrillators. I'm not saying that all patients won't need medication and won't need defibrillators. But it's very often the case that because of these fixed scars, we are able to uh, improve quality of life, avoid those uh, nasty consequences of the, these arrhythmias with an invasive strategy. I'm just going to wrap up with an important uh, last consideration for this group as a whole, and that's the differences with uh, the use of blood thinners. The atrial arrhythmias that I mentioned earlier are very often treated with blood thinners, such as warfarin or some of the newer agents that you may have uh, seen advertised. And that is to prevent stroke. These atrial arrhythmias can lead to clots forming in the heart. And uh, preventing stroke is a central theme for treating this in patients who don't have congenital heart disease. But there are some important differences. In the young patient with congenital heart disease, 
with atrial arrhythmias may be able to avoid anticoagulation. There are also some important caveats to that and some may need anticoagulation and some may even need a procedure. So um, I think best, um, and this is not my advice, best uh, advice from our group, but also from the American Heart Association and uh, part of the guidelines for patients with congenital heart disease, adults with congenital heart disease who have arrhythmias to be seen in a specialist center. There's some excellent centers around the country that really focus in on this. Um, and th I think those are just the important messages we wanted to get out to the community. Thanks very much for your attention.